Wilson? Wilson? Nope. Not here? No, nope. I guess it's just me, guys. Josh here with the Pride Productions with an eighth Blueprints tutorial on the Unreal Engine 4. And I got a bunch of water here, but it don't matter because we're going to talk about Spline Blueprints. That's right, Spline Blueprints. It's going to be a little different, something new, so get ready, F11. I'm already in the DP folder, but the Spline, bl the spline Blueprints are actually going to be working in a different script than we usually do, so get ready. If it's really, really new stuff, right click. Let's go ahead and create a Blueprint, just an actor. And I'll name it the uh, Spline BP, okay? We're gonna make we're gonna make like a little pipe, a procedural pipe we can actually affect in real time. You know what I'm talking about? So get ready for that double click on it, okay? Now here's the thing. We usually add our component and then go into the event graph and you know how we do it, our event begin play and all that, but today we're gonna work in the construction script. And what that means is it's actually gonna work in real time. We're, the next tutorial here soon, we're gonna talk deeper about this, but this is what's happening in the editor. We can change things in the editor, procedural stuff, other stuff, just anything, and you don't actually have to be playing the game to do it. So check it out, let's jump in. Viewport, the thing we need, real quick, add a component, sun, you know how we do it, and type in the word spline, you'll see spline mesh, do not click that, we need the spline, okay? Now check it out, as we compile, we got a little, we got a little dot, a couple dots here with a line connecting them dots. Now the thing is, I can grab a second one here, okay, I can move it around, okay. If I hold alt though, and drag another one, pull another one out, I can curve it a little bit, and drag another one. You see what's going on there, I'm, I'm making lines, I'm making, I'm making dots and lines or something. Let's control Z all that. Because what we want to do is we want to attach a mesh to this and make it function correctly. You know what I'm talking about? So let's compile. We got our dot and lines. Let's go to the construction script and let's get it moving. Now check it out. Let's drag the spline in here. Okay, We got him right here. Now what we need is we have two points here. We need to actually make the mesh, make sure it knows how many points we're using. So we, we, we have some work to do. Okay, so let's drag, let's drag, a, drag a line here and type in uh, get number of spline points. Yeah, that's how we need to see how many we're gonna have because we're gonna make them as we go. We don't know how many we're gonna have. So we're gonna need a for loop. Drag a line from here and type in for loop. Okay, you'll see this here. And basically this is gonna calculate how many dots we have. So as the dots go up, this will help us calculate that as they change in real time. So the first index is obviously gonna be the first one, which is zero. And the second one's gonna be what? The last one. Well, or the next one, the last index is gonna be the last one. Get number of spline points, you'd think plug it right in, but the problem is we already got two. So we do a little math. Drag a line here and press the old subtract button. Integer minus integer. We want to subtract those two first points and plug that into last index, okay? Then compile it and nothing has changed because we need to add a static mesh component, a spline mesh component. Now the thing is we usually go into the components tab and do that, but nope, not today. We're going to drag a line from here and type in add, maybe, maybe add spline mesh component. Okay, so here we go, and if it's selected in the details panel, it asks us for a static mesh. I'm going for the pipe look, right? We talk about trying to make a pipe, so I'll, I'll click the cylinder. If you start with the start your project with the starter content, it'll have some shapes in there. So there's a cylinder, and now if I save it and go back to the viewport or compile, I have my, my cylinder in there attached to my spline. So now if I stretch it out, nope, nothing. Well, if I hold alt, nope, nope. Nothing, guys. Not a thing yet. We got work to do, okay? So check it out. What we're going to need is a few things. So drag a line from here, from the blue, the actual return value of this cylinder. And I want you to type in set, start, and end. See that? Now look at this. It's asking for the start position, the start tangent, and then the end position and the end tangent. I know that looks complicated, but it's actually not that much. The location and the rotation of the first point, and the location and the rotation of the next point. And then for so on and so on and so on and so on, based off this thing, it'll do every one for us. But we need all this. We need all this information. So let's grab our spline again. Grab a little spline, bruh. You know what I'm talking about? Now let's uh, let's drag a wire from it and type in get location. Wait, look, what, 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 you got to spell it right, son. Location, L, L O C. You know what I'm talking about? L O C A. I spell everything really bad. Get location, and you'll see get location at spline point. That's actually exactly what we need. So let's plug that in here, okay? Boom, and we'll plug that into our start position. Now we need the tangent as well. You probably already know what to do. Drag a line, get tangent. At, there it is, get tangent at spline point. It looks the same, you know what I'm talking about? I like that. Green, green wire there, connect those, and we'll plug this into the tangent. So there we go, we got our start positions, okay? Cool, well, we need our end positions, but not actually the end position, but the next position. So it's gonna be one point later. So what we need to do, I'm gonna drag a box around these three, control C, control V, and we'll copy and paste them. But now, when we drag this line out, drag it about right here and press the plus sign. Okay, we're gonna do, oh, make sure you shift plus, so you get the plus, integer plus integer, and we need to just go plus one, and it's already set up there for us. So it's basically going from this point to the next point, plus one, the next one. So we'll plug this into the end 
uh, position and the end tangent. So there we go, guys. We got our start position here. And then the next point is our end position. And each point we create, it'll start it over by using this for loop. It's always calculating. And again, it's in real time. So I don't have to play the game right now. I can literally just compile and go to the viewport. So let's click on it, grab the spline here, grab this point right here. And if I, now it's stretching my, it's stretching it out. You know, I like to stretch it a little bit, kinda. Okay, so spline it again. This time I'll hold alt. What's going on? What's, what's, what's going on there? I can, what up, bro? Y'all don't like that? I think it's, I think it's, uh oh. So we're not gonna, that, that's not working. It's not doing the thing we want it to. You know why? Because we actually haven't set the forward axis of which way this thing's gonna be facing and moving. Very, very simple. Drag us out here, go back to this little blue return value out of our spline mesh component, and this time type in set space forward. Oh, there it is. Boom. Set forward axis. I found it the first time. Sometimes I can't spell very good. Y'all know that. So let's plug that in there and plug this in here. Now let's compile it and look at it. Now, still in the same spot. That's an X. It shows a little Y. What's Y doing? Compile a little Y. Yeah, nah. What's, what's, what's going on, Z? How you doing? Huh? You... Let's go right here. Uh-oh. I think we got it now, son. Let's grab the spline here and grab this point now and see what happens. Oh, okay. It stretches it on the right axis. If I hold Alt, oh, son, we're getting it. Stop, leave it alone. We're going to go out in our world and do it. You know what I'll do? One quick thing. Click on this. Go back to the details. It's set to the static mesh here, right? But I need a material for it, obviously, just to make it look pretty. If, if I have the starter content, I can just go here to the thing here. Type in the word rust, and we'll see M material rust, right? Boom. We'll go ahead and keep that on there and, and compile. Now, if we go to the viewport, we'll see that it has that rusty look like a pipe. I'm talking about check it out now we can since it's done we can just we don't have to play the game we just drag it over here because you know how I do even though I should have done that several minutes ago and now we can drag the thing in here over our water so let's grab it into the world bring it up here so I can see it and it's real tiny you know what that means let's make it bigger it's set to one one and one how about 10 all the way across the board and then we got a big old pipe now watch me work dude if I press G it'll go into gaming mode right get rid of all the stuff make sure G is selected or actually gaming mode is not on that way you can see your splines and watch me go to work I got my little dot here boom hold all go up a little bit you know what I'm talking about hold all go uh, that way a little bit you know what I'm saying hold all one more time and then this time rotate it to go like this oh okay okay hold all Let's uh, rotate it to go this way a little bit. Let's let's hold Alt and go up like this, huh? Rotate that a little bit, like uh, like that. Rotate it again. You know what I'm talking about? Boom! I'm just I'm making a big old noodle slash pipe. It's all rusty, rusty noodles. You know, like little rusty noodles. But the thing is, what's cool is I could actually do a couple more things. Each spline that's selected, you can select the red dot and actually control the rotation even more, like that real fine rotation. And I can go back to the spline itself and grab another one out, okay? There she blow. I can ro rotate that bad baby, and it's rotating that as well, but like I said, just another way of rotating, okay? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just changing my noodle. I'm just ta taking my noodle to, to new places, huh? Little, little noodle pipe action, and there we go. Boom, there you go, guys. I got a procedural pipe slash noodle. I can just basically take this cylinder and bend it and stretch it whatever way I want. This spline is very sensitive, so be careful. Like I said, there's some stuff you may want to be really careful of some of your rotations and stuff like that, so be very careful when doing this kind of stuff, but it is really, really, really helpful when you need like procedural content. You need to not make a billion pipes. You just need one that you can toy around with. So, guys, yeah, there you go. Boom. I know it messed up a little bit there at the end. It's one of those, one of those things I probably rotated it wrong and like I said you can go back in here and kind of figure out what went wrong there I can move it up a little bit or maybe it rotated the wrong way and kind of toy with it or maybe it could be the lighting needs built in the world I have no clue but guys real simple stuff right and then if I want all kind of noodles I can just grab and copy and paste them and I got all kind of noodles you know what I'm saying noodles for days noodles everywhere everybody wants some I got them if you want a couple, just come get at me. But there you go, guys. Some spline blueprint or some, some spline style blueprints. Like I said, we just we blueprints. We just jumped in here, went to the com components tab or the the uh, construction script this time, because like I said, we want to work with it in the editor. But just a real quick overview: we take the the number of points. We already know we have two, so we subtract them. So we have the first index and then index and then however many we have. Um, we create our spline mesh component, uh, click our static mesh, create a material for it, and then we get our start and end location of the first point and then the end point. 
And then we set it all right here. Set the forward axis the way it worked. Z was perfect for us. And then boom, we're out here in the world making noodles. You know what I'm talking about? Let's just make them. Have some fun, guys. Real simple way of procedurally creating pipes or any kind of cylinder. You could do anything. A cube, a sphere. Try different shapes. Try different things. Have a blast with it. This is just the, the basics. You know what I'm talking about? Guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Uh, Deprived Productions all day. Subscribe to the channel. Please hit the Facebook page. The SoundCloud for Deprived is wide open. We got all our music, our free music there for download. Download it. Hit it up. The album's on there purchase it it's three bucks it's awesome uh we got a new tutorial series in the unreal engine 4 starting in just a few days world development series get ready for that we're going to talk about landscapes and lighting and and globes and fog and and resolution and blah, 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 all kind of cool stuff but yeah just another quick blueprint for you make some money go get it done don't be scared of it josh signing out love you guys miss you guys peace